Hello and welcome to Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes, where we speak to the best of the bronies and discover what makes them tick. Here's a little secret for you viewers. Normally when we record Creative Vibes, usually I have my loyal producer and friend Sugar Dove helping to keep the show flowing smoothly behind the scenes. Mainly stopping me from going off the rails, but I digress. But listeners, she's not here today. And I have plans! You see, I wanted to bring on a guest who is very similar to myself. Someone who's funny, attractive, incredibly charismatic, has good hair, sings, and makes bad jokes. So I made the call. And David Hasselhoff refuses to come on my show. But then I had a bright idea. My guest tonight is an interesting combo. She's a brony reactor, singer, and so good at the puns, she makes me seem like a rank amateur in comparison. So at the speed of light, let there be bright idea. It's great to welcome Bright Idea to the show. Bright, how are you doing? I am doing very well. Thank you for that very flattering introduction. And it is true, I do a lot of those things that... He has just mentioned. Oh, definitely you do. I mean, we have to talk about the puns. You and I are very similar. We just both love those horrible, daft, cringeworthy puns that make your stomach go into knots. Yes, I do them all. I'm, I'm proud to be corny, cheesy, whatever. Um, I usually like the subtle puns where you just... I, I say them nonchalantly, and they just slip by, but then somebody gets it, and that's my pride and joy. And I did something a while ago where I did a uh, puniversary special, my one-year anniversary, and there I got a whole bunch of user-submitted jokes and puns, and there were some bad ones, but I say them with... I ham it up, and... I deliver them the best I can, and that I think a lot of people liked. I got a lot of good comments anyway. Well, if you're going to tell daft jokes, always give it your all. That's what I say. We got to witness some of those puns in the Paniversary special, but were there any that were just too cringeworthy for the special, or did you just go gung-ho for that episode? Mm. Well, I know I have them on file somewhere, but I don't know if I can recall any uh, that come to mind. Like, I had a, like, they're all comments on a previous video that I did for leading up to that, where Bright Idea Needs Jokes, just put, put your comment down below and I'll choose my favorites and they'll be included in the Puniversary special. So, I guess if you wanted to see some of the jokes that didn't make it, you could go to the previous video there. Bright, you're not just a fan of the pun, but you're also rather the musician, posting a variety of MLP parodies and homages on your channel. But you also sang an original Mother's Day song, which you wrote and performed on ukulele. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was one of the few original songs that I did. And that I actually wrote a year, the Mother's Day before that one. And I had just gotten the ukulele for a birthday. And it was actually my birthday a few years ago. So I've had the ukulele for two years now. So, and... I was learning some chords, and some went together, and I thought, I want to do something special for my mom, so I wrote her a song, and then that was that. And I have a, a recording of it on my other YouTube channel, my um, the one based on my name, which is Annette Levy, and that one was before I got my new microphone, and the one on my bright idea channel is with my good mic so i'm really more proud of that one i've got to say it's a great wee track and it was so lovely to see your mother in pony form have you shown her the song and video and what did she think of it mm -hmm. yes oh yes oh she loved it she thought it was adorable and she loves that i made a pony version of her and she likes unicorns so i decided to make her that 
I'm glad to hear she enjoyed it. It's a very sweet song, and you definitely have some talent for original songwriting. Have you got any others hidden away in the vaults, or planned for future videos, or was it more of a one-time thing? Uh, yeah, it was kind of a one-time thing, but whenever a Brad idea strikes, I and I really like it, I go ahead and do it. Uh, so if I ever come up with something that awesome again, then I'll... Uh, I try what I can to make it a reality. The puns! The puns! Oh, I'm guessing you've been singing for quite a while then. Oh yeah, I love singing. I love um, making up. I, I love changing the words to a song that I like. And like, I love Taylor Swift. So one of my videos is a parody of her song Blank Space, where I do Blank Flank. And what's funny about that one is that I, I put a lot of work into it. I wrote it, I recorded it, and found different clips of the CMCs uh, before they had they got their cutie marks. And then the week after I put it out on YouTube, the uh, what is that? Um, lost no, I forgot what the episode was. R Crusaders of the Lost Mark. And they all got their cutie marks, and I'm like, oh, they're not blank flanks anymore. Oh, man. Oh, hell, that is bad timing. <laughs> one week. And, um, yeah, it's one of my most popular videos. Uh, it's got a few thousand. So I'm, I'm really proud of that one. And that's gotten me known for doing a good Apple Bloom impression. And one thing I did learn that... I learned that Michelle Krieber actually shares my birthday. You and Michelle share a birthday? <laughs> yeah. And I love it because I love doing Apple Bloom's voice. You want to hear it? Hey, I think we all want to hear Apple Bloom's voice. Hi, my name's Apple Bloom. How are you? My sister's name's Applejack. How are you, Scootaloo? Huh? Hi, Swinny Bell. Hey, that is great. That is great. Uh, hey, would Apple Boom like to answer a question for us? Huh? I would, if you have a good one. And I, I, well, I could try my best. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I suddenly went stubborn there. That was, that was a may happen. <laughs> but Apple, if you want to hear more of my Apple Bloom uh, voice, I'm, do, I'm actually a part of an audio drama with AJ the Autistic Pony. Uh, he has a fan fiction reading called Pride of the Apples, and uh, I recommend you check it out. Oh, awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll put that in the description below. So, guys, you want to go check that out, that is the place to go. But, Apple <coughs> Boom, I wanted to ask, what do you think of Bright Ideas reaction episodes? Well, I think my favorite one was when she and um, this pony, Evan, they did a Fall Weather Friends, and that was with... Applejack and Rainbow Dash, and she really liked the episode, and Evan was like, oh no, this episode is terrible, I hate it. So it was like a good back and forth. I love that voice so much. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a major fanboy moment right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should point out, just in case for viewers who don't already know, uh, Applejack and the Apple family are, they're my favourite characters, so any reference to them you all might get you know brownie points from me or brony points or whatever they call them these days brony points, brony points. Like <laughs> well i'll tell you what i could say actually going back to the songs we're saying because i know we were talking about how you do um, parodies and so on is that because you're uh, quite a big fan i noticed of weird al yankovic oh yes i can go talk for hours about weird al yankovic and when he came on to the show i was just fangirling and is like he's one of the, my favorite characters and he worked so well off of Pinky which is like the favorite of the main six for, and she has been for a while now. Before it was like on the fence between Twilight Sparkle and Pinkie Pie but now it's like full on Pinkie Pie. Ah perfect so how come you enjoy Pinkie Pie? What's your, what do you enjoy about her? Mmm well, her energy is just so infectious, and her random humor, and just her her dedication to making people, or making ponies smile, is just admirable, and 
even when she's feeling sad, she she doesn't really feel sorry for herself that long. All she wants is to make others happy. And I see a lot of myself in her in that way. Oh, definitely. I actually noticed in a... You did an interview thing recently on DeviantArt, you know, one of those little chain things which gets passed around and you mm-hmm. answer as your OC. And I noticed uh, in between the answers where it was talking there about how, you know, you, you love to, you know, be happy and inspire others to be happy. I noticed that you have a couple of secret powers. You have the power to teleport once a day uh, mm-hmm. and do fast maths and it apparently yeah. gets stronger the more puns you do. Oh, yeah. It's, um... Yeah, the thing with the teleportation is I can only do it once a day because any more than that, and I get a little lightheaded. Ah, I see. Of course, that would do a wonder if you'd get one heck of a headache, I suppose, after teleporting. Yeah, yeah and um, yeah, the puns give me power because it, it makes me more happy. And I think the more happy I am, the more magic ability I have. I can certainly understand that. It explains the amount of puns you do because you start to fit them in everywhere. And yep. the other thing I noticed, and uh, <laughs> this is something that I actually clue me about myself, but I noticed this uh, when I was reading the uh, interview on DeviantArt, was that uh, your heart has been claimed by many characters, I think would be one way of putting it. So, oh, yes. I have many ships. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a trump card for the shipping community then? Yep. Yep. Ship me with any pony, any stallion, any mare. I can take it. I love being shipped because I am loved by so many and I love so many people. Right, listen up there, fanfic writers. You've heard it here first. If you want to get... <laughs> you've Somebody got... actually wrote, wrote me a really sweet fanfic for my birthday. Uh, AJ, like I said, who uh, is doing the Pride of the Apples, he wrote me a sweet fanfic. And uh, he was like my cult friend for the day. And I was just, oh, that's so sweet. Oh, oh, hey, it's great when you get things like that. And, uh, you know, hopefully, perhaps after this, you might get one or two nice uh, fanfics as well with Bright Idea. You never know. You yeah. never know. But mm-hmm. I tell you what. Make it tasteful, please. Oh, of course. Yeah, no, definitely. Let's make it, ni- <laughs> let's make it nice. We don't want anything, you know, too dank or anything daft. We don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Save that for Midnight Scribe. He can cope with that. Ah. <laughs> but I tell you what. I want to go back, actually to the thing we've been talking about the paniversary there are pans the love of pans and mm-hmm. because for your first year anniversary of the channel you did your paniversary special video where you like you said you took a uh, pans from a uh, viewers of the channel and read them out mm-hmm. and i wanted to ask you i wanted to actually to do a little game with you actually Woo-hoo. because initially i was actually going to do this uh with a uh, james as well but sadly james couldn't make it today and you know we wish him all the best but uh, what we're going to, we're going <laughs> to, sorry, I know what's coming. <laughs> right. <laughs> what I decided to do was I figured, right, we were going to have Bright Idea, Movie Slate, and Midnight Scribe on the show. So here's what we do. I'm going to see if there's a pun we can come up with for all three characters. But uh, I kind of left it a little bit late. So I decided to experiment with a site, right, called PunGenerator.org. So mm. as a little experiment, because I, I literally just typed in pun generator, I just wanted to see if I could find something. And so what I have done is I have put parts of our name into this site, and Ooh. I have tried to salvage a joke out of the stuff it gave back to me. Because <laughs> I, I will share how bad the results were later on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a pun for each of them. Uh, right. that, and I just want to see which one you would rate the best. All right. And um, yeah, by the way, like I would just like to say once again for clarification, this is part. This came partially from PanGenerator.org, i.e., it isn't my fault. It's not funny. <laughs> but okay, so we're gonna start off with Movie Slate, which is a uh, okay. Uh, uh, now the thing about Movie Slate, if uh, you guys don't know, created by James Cork, is the fact that Movie Slate runs a cinema in Equestria and is a big lover of films of all types, all kinds. Now. Mm-hmm. The thing as well is that I, did you, I never thought that movie would ever have a singing career because she's always doing, you know, movies all the time. You know, that's her thing. But I've actually heard she's actually been on the X Factor and she's actually got her first single coming out, which is going to be a cover of that Phil Collins track, A Movie Kind of Love. Hmm. Interesting. I... That was actually one of the few ones I can work with. <laughs> the results that site gave me, trust me, some of them were horrible I had to work with. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I, I, I didn't get that. That was the joke. Wait, a movie <laughs> kind of love? Phil Collins had a track called A Groovy Kind of Love. 
Oh, um, um, moving kind of love? A movie kind of love. Oh, a groovy? Wait, is it a groovy kind of love? Because I... I know that song. <laughs> yeah, a gro- I'm not sure if I'm familiar with the Phil Collins one. This gives you an idea, ladies and gentlemen, of how bad this site is. <laughs> <laughs> that we're having to dissect. I know, we've got a groovy kind of love. That's it. That's it. Same song. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm... I thought, oh, okay. Yeah, that one bombed. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, listen, like, I listen, hey, listen, it's not my fault. This is the yeah. site that has given me this. <laughs> well, here, this is where it gets a bit worse. We've got Bright Idea now uh, coming up. All right, lay another one on me. Okay. <laughs> right, I run a haunted house attraction, but it really terrifies me. And I only ever do it if Bright Idea is paid to go. It helps me a lot, as the customer is always bright. The customer is always bright. I got it. <laughs> well, that's a step above the previous one at the very least. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess if the customer is always bright, then I'm the only customer. That is true, actually. Well, hey, listen, it might not be a very good haunted house attraction. I mean, if it's bright, I suppose it's never actually. <laughs> it's not a very good haunted house. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's scary about a lit haunted house? The wallpaper? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, just... <laughs> I guess some interior decorating can be scary. Well, definitely, there's <laughs> definitely places where the, where the wallpaper and the furnishings just make you want to run away and scream. Oh yeah. Now here's the here's the annoying part, right? Because I had to try and put in midnight scribe or put in midnight or scribe, and mm-hmm. the site completely failed me. It it, ter- it turns out Scribe and Midnight it doesn't like. So I decided, right, we're going to use Kyle, because that's my name. So I figured, right, we're going to see if that gives me anything. So okay. <laughs> here's this one, right? <laughs> People ask me, Midnight, Kyle, you're a minor known pony with a small talk show. How does it feel to have people recognize you? Mm. I always say I am not above anybody else. I'm just part of the ranking, Kyle. Mm, ranking, Kyle. I'm not sure if I got what that actually means, The but... Like, what is that supposed to be a pun on? Uh, are you familiar with the phrase rank and file? No, I'm not. It means being part of just the ordinary group, just part of your, the rank and file, just part of the group as, a part as, as opposed to being okay. like a leader or something like that. All right. Rank and file. Oh, that's a new one for me. Oh, well, hey, creative vibes can be educational at times as well. E. That's my favorite type of uh, entertainment where it sneaks in some educational bits. That's uh, edutainment rather than infotainment. Hmm. Is that an element you actually like about uh, Friendship is Magic? Because obviously a lot of the show is actually, uh, particularly the earlier seasons, were about teaching certain ideals about friendship and life. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things that really got me hooked on the show was the fact that not only was it entertaining and it had great music and great characters, but the stories actually have some valuable lessons that you can apply to your everyday life and the ponies are very i mean they're very human like and this it's so relatable the characters are just so good oh definitely there's absolutely no doubt there and how did you actually come to be a fan of my little pony in the first place Mm. well i guess it was somewhere around uh late 2012 early 2013 definitely sometime before the third season started and i had a friend who really liked my little pony and uh i guess i had known about my little pony since 20 since it was released because i used to really read this website called cartoon boom i think it was it was there was an article featured on the website and so i like oh, okay, they have a a show about My Little Pony. And it was like hailing the end of the creator-driven cartoon thing, blah, blah, blah. It's like a bad thing. So I was like, oh, it looks pretty. I don't know. And I didn't really think too much about that. And then two years later, I um, see on the internet, there's all these memes and pictures and stuff of, oh, that looks interesting. I actually got to give it a try. So I did. And then I watched the second episode, and third episode, and bada bing, bada boom, <laughs> I'm a brony, or a pegasister, whatever you call it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, like, it is a very common tale. That's the same thing that happened to me. It's like, once you've had a little bit of it, you need more. That is it. There is no, yep. there's no coming back after that. 
you're in the herd. <laughs> Indeed. And um, it actually got me really close with uh, one of my friends who, uh, who at first wasn't uh, that much of a, a public brony, but like it, it's a really cool thing. Like that, such a show could build stronger friendships. And I've made so many friends in the brony community just in this past year. Yeah, I mean, that's the great thing, I suppose, about the fandom is the fact that, uh, you know, it has had the power to unite a lot of people together. Like, even in my short time of doing this show, the amount of people and friends I've been able to meet as a result of it, it's just been staggering. You know what I mean? It's such a friendly, warm community. You know, people just, you know, chat to each other. You see people at conventions and all the rest of it. And it just kind of, it's just a lovely, gooey pile of love. (laughs) Yes, and I'm all about that. And um, just recently, in uh, last August, I got to go to my second uh, brony-only, what do you call it, Um, brony-specific convention, and I got to do my first ever panel, and I was really nervous, but I think it went quite well. Oh, Craigie, that's fantastic. What was the uh, panel you were doing? Tell us a little bit more. Well, it was bringing bright ideas to life, and basically me and my friend and my sister, we uh, sat and I would talk about the before, during, and after of bringing bright ideas to life, so talking about how, where to get inspiration from, what, like, some of the technical things about, like, whether you're working on a story or working on a video or a song or... Uh, heck uh, like a drawing uh, anything that is creative it comes from bright ideas so basically i just you said my name a bunch of times and uh talked all about my creative process and stuff <laughs> and i was i think i beat myself up about how uh, long it went or um not many people showed up but those who did were a great audience and um i was just really nervous but i think it went really well well, I'm glad it went well, and you know, doing your first panel or anything at the, one of these conventions is a mind-numbing, wrecking experience. You know, I oh, yeah. like it was a learning experience, all right. And uh... next time, I will be sure to take advantage of any visual aids that can help me because I did not bring my computer with me, so it could hook up to the projector. So I was just, it was all on me. Ah, oh, right. Oh, right. I could see why that would have been even more nerve wracking just having to, because then everyone's focusing yourself instead of like, you know, whatever fancy PowerPoint yeah. you've got on the screen. Just, yeah. no, I, I totally understand what you mean. Uh, at, um, at the 2015 Brony Scott, uh, I had to do my first uh, kind of live thing. We did a live episode of Creative Vibes and I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> I was, I was up there just like I, you know, I got one of the names of one of our guests wrong. I was mm-hmm. blithering around like an idiot. It's like you know what I mean. It's like you're suddenly like an Energizer bunny on like twice the batteries that you should be on. It's just like he he he. I mean, great fan loved it, but it's just I I understand entirely what you went through. <laughs> awesome, and yeah, but the whole thing was such an awesome experience. I got to see. Peter New and Nicole Oliver and get autographs from both of them. They are so awesome in person, so friendly. Oh, it's great. It's great to see when you're able to meet people uh, from the fandom like that. I actually missed the opportunity to see uh, Emmy Larson at Heartwarming Cons. I'm still slightly oh. kicking myself for doing that. I, sh- <laughs> I should have gone up to him and asked him about the alicorns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> alicorns everywhere you're an alicorn they're an alicorn everybody gets to be an alicorn oh, I love it. <laughs> alicorns everywhere <laughs> well i'll tell you what what i wanted to ask you as well was that um you know your initial plan from the channel from your introductory video as bright idea on the channel was that you're planning on doing you know pony parodies reaction videos random vlog style videos top 10 lists and a whole lot more and now you're actually by the time this airs, you'll be nearing your second year producing videos. So how far do you feel you've come as a creator since you've started? And what bright ideas do you have for the channel in the future? Oh, I have so many bright ideas for this channel. And um, I've definitely improved so much as a creator since that first video. And 
actually, that wasn't my first video um, with Bright Idea. On my other channel, Annette Levy, which uh, should be in the description, I have my uh, Pony Parody series. And the first video that I did was in Feb... Bright Idea production I did was February 2014. And, and that was a parody of um, Kung Pao Enter the Fist. And my friend had showed me that movie, and I loved it. And I thought, wouldn't it be funny if clips from if different characters from MLP were took the places of those characters? So I just slapped that together, and it got 250 views the first day. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna make more of these. And I haven't had the chance to in so long because I'm involved in so many other things now. But that was what got me started, and. Yeah, um, my I got a new microphone since then, and definitely better editing. Um, I've got so I wish I could add more time to do top ten lists because I have so many. I want to do like top, uh, top morals, top blue characters, not just in My Little Pony, but in other media. But I have a fear that that would be, um. That would be quite selfish of me because I'm only focusing on the blue, but that's my favorite color. And top unappreciated characters in My Little Pony that should get more of a spotlight. I like, could should shorten that title. Um, so many movies I want to do. Like people have been suggesting different ones, like Jurassic Park, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I want to do a Willy Wonka one. I want to do a What About Bob parody. <laughs> And have Discord be uh, Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> and it even fits because they had an episode called What About Discord? Oh, of course it did. They did indeed. <laughs> oh, boy. Dis and I love Discord. He's just the greatest. Oh, yes. No, you can't beat a bit of Discord. You can't beat him at all. So you've been involved in the fandom now for, you know, nearly two years now, on and off, and doing other projects and so on. You've, and as you said, you've become incredibly involved working in projects with other people and so on. What is your opinion of the fandom, how, and how does it rate to other fandoms? Mm. Well, this is really the first fandom where I made so many connections with people just based on the fact that we like the same thing. And I really think it's warm and friendly and all those other things you said, there are people in the fandom that aren't all that great, but I tend not to pay attention to them. I just focus on those in my circle and my who, whoever I look up to, whoever influences me. I love how creative and caring the community is. And really it's gotten me more involved in other fandoms, like... Um, I love Steven Universe, I love Doctor Who, I love um, Gravity Falls. There's so much creativity that comes in these different fandoms and so much awesomeness. And it, like really, it's, this is my fandom. Uh, like this is the best fandom I've been in. And um, let me see. I, 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 I think I lost my train of thought. I wanted to... <laughs> I, I, there was a second part to the question, I think. But... Uh, no, I, no worries. I think you kind of answered it anyway. Don't, so don't worry. If the train's gone, of course, you don't have to worry about getting it back on track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got one in. I've been yeah. waiting all episode to get something in. Ah. And one that isn't based on that stupid pan generator, which actually I right. briefly got to bring this back up again because I've actually got the page up because I want to reveal to you how bad this site was. Just Because right. I put in, right... It, the pan generator allows you to either um, to put in a uh, type in words or to generate puns or to find phrases that kind of match. Mm -hmm. So I thought, right, I'll put in bright idea because I figured that's a kind of relatively common phrase that would probably have quite a lot. Oh yeah. Here is the top five results I got from this site, <laughs> which, okay. and I'm going to say the 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 quote unquote pun because I just. <laughs> <laughs> These are horrible, right? Because <laughs> they're not puns, right? Here's what they are, right? Okay. Tra Traveler's bright idea, infectious bright idea, bovine virus bright idea, 
bovine Cr- virus? What? Yeah, chronic bright idea of infancy. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> antibiotic associated bright idea. <laughs> antibiotic? <laughs> <laughs> which, oh, which I've yeah, got. Those are not puns. Those are just random words thrown together. Yeah, which explains a lot. And it. it Here's the reason why, right? Because I, I spent I spent so long staring at that, being so confused. I didn't actually look at what the originals are because they tell you what the original thing was before you've they've changed the words. And mm. I, it turns out that they've kind of done that thing. They, instead of making a pun so much, they've just made the words rhyme. So bright mm-hmm. idea to that site sounds like diarrhea. Oh man. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, that's Diarrhea. that's not it's not a, it's not a great site. I mean, oh. which is like, and actually, hang on, just out of curiosity, I mean, if I were to put in, hang on, a scribe, which wasn't much better, I'll be honest with you, just because it tried to it just it tried to rhyme scribe with tribe, which is fair enough, but then scribe with right. Ah, okay. And with light, that does not rhyme. Scribe no, just <laughs> there is no it's way the, I can. The middle rhymes. Scribe. <laughs> just... Ay, 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 Oh, that yeah. So, my creative vibes tip of the day: if you're looking to make puns, don't use pun generator because seriously, no. all you're gonna do is break the internet with that. Yeah, sounds terrible. It it, <laughs> it, is, it really is. <laughs> this is why I like you because you make good homegrown, lovely puns. Yeah. yeah, I love doing homemade things. And um, I want to. Oh, I think I wanted to get back to uh, the community and um, how many collabs I've gotten to do, and like uh, that's one of my favorite things about this fandom is the fact that so many people, so many bronies, uh, do collaborations with each other in different projects. And some of my the favorite videos I've been a part of have been collaborations, and um, my first one was with. Uh, Rosie Seavers, aka Rose Pal, on a review of Hearthbreak. Um, what's the one with Applejack and Pinkie Pie doing Hearthswarming? Was oh. it Hearthbreakers? Oh, crikey, they, I they, couldn't they, tell they, you. Where they visit the the Pie family, and uh, that was a really good experience. And like since then, I've just loved doing collabs. Oh and well, I don't, I don't always have the time for them. <laughs> But if there's a particularly bright idea I can be a part of, then uh, I love to be a part of it. Ooh, well, who knows? Maybe you might get a few uh, suggestions in your inbox soon after this episode from people wanting mm-hmm. to to do yeah. some bright ideas for you. Yeah, my favorites are uh, voice cameos so, because I don't have to do a lot of work there. <laughs> if you want me in your video, then yeah, give me a line, and uh, if it's good, I'll record it. <laughs> Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to do that, she's the person to speak to. But I tell you what, we should actually probably wrap up the show just now because knowing me and all those puns, we've probably been, I, I say puns, bad jokes. <laughs> we've been, we've been, we're probably running a bit over time. So firstly, oh, I've, just, yeah. I've got to say thank you so much, Bright Idea, for coming on the show. And I hope you've enjoyed yourself, uh, the, those horrible jokes aside. <laughs> oh, I enjoyed myself. Thank you for having me on your show. I love it. And I, I'll, listen, I'll, don't mention it, listen, I'm more than happy to have you on, and, and you know, we've been waiting to do this for such a long time, it is great to finally do it and to be able to chat with you again, because it's always great chatting with yourself, you know, it's always a good laugh, and the, the final question I've got to ask is, where can we find you on the web, where can we send the flock, the herd? Mm-hmm. Um, you can find me on my YouTube channel, I have a DeviantArt page, which I recently changed, it used to be Cartoon Connoisseur. But now it is a dash bright dash idea, and uh, somebody gifted me the the core membership. Thank you very much, manic bulbs. And um, let's see. Oh, I also have a Facebook page where you can uh, see updates and stuff. I don't actually update all that much, but uh, DeviantArt is the best place to see me. Alrighty, and what we'll do is we'll put all those links in the description below. So Philly's gentle coach will be able to go see her, you know, put in your fanfics, ask for voice cameos, all the bright ideas. But we should but we will wrap up the show just there for now. My thanks to Bright Idea for coming on the show. My thanks to you guys for watching. And if you want to get in contact with us, well, there are a variety of amazing ways to do it. We have our Facebook, we have our Twitter, Tumblr, our YouTube, we're on Google Plus, we're 
basically taking over the web slowly but surely. And we have our email address, uh, helmbronies at hotmail.com. So if you want to get in contact with us with constructive critique, uh, you know, praise you want to give us, hey, we won't say no to any praise. Praise is nice. Uh, or if you're a creator in the fandom and perhaps you'd like to be featured on the show, you know, get in contact with us, send us your links, your work. We will see what happens because, hey, there might be a season four. You never know. But we will wrap up the show there for just now. Thanks to you all for watching, and the final word from Midnight Scribe is, as always, please subscribe. Can I say something? Of course you can. All right. Keep a lookout for those bright ideas. <laughs> Thank you.